their focus isn't primarily honey and uh, commercial sales and farmers market sales, you can make it so that your focus is just to pollinate the crop that you have. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Uh, we've got a question here and I'm borrowing some glasses today because I forgot mine. So I look awesome. I already know that. Um, Delphia, great to see you again. Thanks for coming back. You've got a question for us. What was the name of the last book? And that was Honeybee Diseases and Pests by, who was it again? Canada, Canadian Association for uh, Professional Apiculturalists. Okay. I right. hope you got um, that. Uh, if I recall, you can you can purchase it online. I believe I uh, I have access to it as well. Uh, there's you can get it from Amazon and elsewhere. Uh, it's about a twenty thirty dollar book. Okay, great. So um, the mini hive that's the size. Uh, every beehive has specific dimensions based on the sizes of the frames. The next frame, the need. Uh, why would we need a little mini beehive? Why don't we just have big ones? Just, I, I would think it would just be for convenience or the type of style that you're doing or? You know, um, I, I had 250 large colonies mm -hmm. and uh, I would work them. I would uh, try and understand what was going on inside the hives. And it takes a while for a new beekeeper to learn what's going on in a beehive, learning to identify the queen, learning to see the eggs on a frame. If an egg, if you were to take a pencil and just touch it to the piece of paper, that's almost the size of an egg. Wow. And so if your eyes are poor with lots of bees on there, it's hard to see the egg. It's hard to see the queen. It's like finding Waldo. Um, if you were to look inside this hive uh, and look for a queen, know that she's a little bit bigger. Uh, her abdomen is about twice the length. Um, one of the things that gives it away is the black dot on her back or the colored dot, like we said yesterday, mm -hmm. or the fact that her wings are half the size of her abdomen. Um, but it's still finding Waldo, trying to figure out where in that hive she is. Yeah, over the course of of the time we spent together, I've kind of looked in there and I've yet to see anything that I thought was a queen. Mm -hmm. um, I just assumed that they were more inside and hidden. She's typically in there protected. Okay. And so it's, it's uh, if it was a single frame, you'd be able to see her right away. Gotcha. So a need, uh, rearing a local queen. When I go around the country and I teach, I'll ask beekeepers, uh, how many of you know how to raise a queen? And out of a hundred, usually there's one or two. Uh, that's a really sad number because if anything fails within the beehive, uh, the queen dies, you accidentally kill her, uh, she's not there, you don't see signs of brood, um, what do you do? Well, you need to know how to either replace her uh, with buying another one, which if she's gone for too long, then uh, you have problems with uh, it being a laying worker hive and it's hard to recover from that. Okay. So knowing how to rear a local queen, this is, would be referred to as a mating nuke. Uh, the other, it's less intimidating. Uh, there's kids that come to my shop where we'll go out into the field and uh, look at the bees. Uh, I'll pull out a frame. Uh, typically the bees aren't aggressive on these small frames because they're focused. These are nurse bees. Uh, they're young bees. They haven't learned what their stinger is for yet. Uh, their whole focus is to take care of young, clean, not defense. And so when you pull those out and look at them, their uh, job isn't to come and defend the hive. It's mm -hmm. to do what they were doing. And so it gives the beekeeper a chance to learn and see and uh, become familiar with the things that are going on inside the hive. So it's less intimidating. Okay. I've got a question here real quick before you move on to the next subject. Um, from Jacob Jennings, in a healthy environment, with a mini hive, when should you add another box? And thank you very much, Jacob. That's a great question. We'll go through that again, but to answer it now, um, my focus when I do uh, work with the little hives, um, typically you'll start with one or two frames of bees. Once all those five frames are full, you see bees all over them and you inspect the frame and you see them capped. 
So the, it means that within uh, 10 days, those cap uh, babies are going to hatch. If this is all full and it's capped, in 10 days, there's not enough room for those bees. It's, there's not enough space. So when I see those capped, that's when I add another box to the bottom. The reason why I don't add that sooner is because there's not enough bees in here to regulate um, the temperature and defend it and do all that other stuff. And so um, it's not quite the same as a bigger hive where you wait for seven frames to be full and then you add another box. This here you're waiting for this box to be full uh, and it's capped and then you add another box. Um, as you go on and add more boxes and as the bees are growing, you can add the boxes quicker. Uh, once it gets into the honey boxes, uh, it depends on what your forage is. Uh, is it a nectar flow? Is it uh, a time of dearth like in Utah in the middle of summer? It's dry. There's not a lot of food for them. And so they're fighting for little bits of this and that. So. Um, that's when I'd add another box, but we'll even talk about that still more. All right, great.